In this video, we'll start talking about a central problem here with planar graphs, which is how do we tell if a graph is planar or not? So for example, um, what about uh, the graph K5? So here I can draw K5 uh, as we normally do with the outside five cycle and the interior five cycle. So can this, is, is this graph planar? So it's in general, right, this is a difficult question right now uh, because the only tools we have to tell if a graph is planar or not is, well, can we rearrange the vertices? Can we draw this in a different way so that no two edges are crossing? Um, so, right, there's lots of different ways we could do this, that we could redraw this graph, and we'd have to sort of check all of them or come up with some kind of argument um, involving, involving the positioning of the vertices uh, to prove that this is, is, is planar or not planar, or, or prove that it's not planar, we'd have to come up with some argument, or once we find a drawing of it drawn in the plane, that would conclude that it's planar. Um, but right now, that's really our only tool that we have. So we're going to see in a second that we can prove K5 is not planar. We'll say no. And the idea is there's too many edges. It just has too many edges for it to be planar. Um, it breaks an upper bound on the size of any planar graph. So this is the result we're after, is an upper bound for the size of any planar graph. All right, so what's the magic number? What, what, yeah, how many edges can a planar graph have before it becomes automatically non-planar? Well, it turns out if G is a planar graph of order n at least three in size m, then m is at most three n minus six. All right, so we're gonna prove this. And I think, yeah, one thing I wanna do is just uh, before we begin, I just want to draw a plane. Uh, I'll just draw a planar graph. I'm going to draw K4, my favorite planar graph. And I just want to note something that every edge of this graph um, lies on the boundary of at most two regions. So this graph, every edge lies on the boundary of exactly two regions. So again, I'll point out my regions. Every edge lies on the boundary of exactly two here. However, what if I added, say, an edge, a pendant edge coming off here? Then this edge would only lie on the boundary of the exterior region uh, outside there. Uh, and so one thing that, that, that my proof is going to rely on is adding up the edges of the graph. So counting the edges of the graph by counting the edges of, uh, that that bound each region. So I'm gonna to need to keep in mind two things here, that in a planar embedding, so in a planar embedding, I'm sorry, I can do better. Oh, froze, all right, here we go. In a planar embedding, or plane graph, a connected graph, one each edge is on the boundary of at most two regions. And if I add up, so let's see. Um, so if I, yeah, you know, what do I want to say? If I add, if I add uh, the edges that bound each cycle. Um, and I add that up over all cycles, each edge is counted, um, is counted twice. Uh, 
right? Because of this, each edge is on the boundary of at most two regions. Each edge is counted at most twice. So this is a consequence. So this is the idea. I'm going to add up the number of edges. It's, it's essentially a counting argument. So there's a couple of preliminary things we have to take care, care of here uh, in the proof. Um, one is if n is, it, it holds for n equal to 3, because automatically m is less than or equal to 3. Right. Uh, 3 choose 2 is 3. That's the size of the complete graph on three vertices. So automatically this will hold. Um, right. Every every graph of order 3 is, uh, is planar. Uh, next, uh, so we can assume n is at least 4. We can also assume it's connected. Because if, it, if it's not connected, that means I can add edges in without any danger of crossing, uh, without adding any crossings or anything like that. But if it were already planar, I can add more edges in and still it won't be planar. So I wouldn't have reached the maximum size possible, right? If I have a disconnected graph, something like this, I can always add an edge in. If it's already plain, I can add an edge into it. So you may assume that G is connected order n, and size m. And now we're going to start this, this counting argument, keeping in mind the Euler identity. So keep in mind that n minus m plus r uh, is equal to 2. Now I want a little bit uh, more notation here. So I'm going to let r1, r2, so, so actually let, um, let there be A planar. So we're assuming G is planar, right? If G is planar, so we're assuming G is planar. So let there be a planar embedding of G, resulting in, let's say, R regions. Right, then we could say N minus N plus R is equal to 2. And let R1, R2 up through R sub little r uh, be the regions. And I want to keep track of how many edges bound each region. So I'm going to let uh, little m sub i be the number of edges that bound region r sub i. Uh, so we know that um, since n is at least 4, uh, that uh, the exterior region will have at least four edges, and then uh, the boundary of any region has to be a cycle. Um, and so m sub i is at least three, right? We know any cycle um, has at least three edges. Uh, so for each, for each i. And then we use this fact, the boundary, um, each edge is on the boundary of at most two regions. So if I add up all the edges along each cycle, so if I do this sum, sum of the little m sub i's from i equals one to r, then this will be at most two times the number of edges. Um, I also know that uh, the sum of these number of edges, right? Since since each m sub i is at most three, we also have that three times the number of regions. So that's i equal one to r is at most this sum of the m sub i's. So maybe I could have um, written that a little bit better, but I have these two these two inequalities. Um, so, right, so that is 3r is less than or equal to the sum of the m sub i's, i equal 1 to r, which is less than or equal to 2m. All right, so here's where we get a little bit clever. 
Um, if I take three times the Euler identity, so take this whole thing and multiply it by three, well, this would tell me that six is equal to three N minus three M plus three R. So why would we multiply everything by three? Well, one, because I have this three R figure, which I'm being told is, or which I've uh, deduced is at most uh, twice the number of edges. So what that means is I can say this is less than or equal to 3n minus 3m, uh, and 3r is less than or equal to 2m plus 2m. So that's 3n minus m. So if 6 equal, uh, is less than or equal to 3n minus m, so m is less than or equal to 3n minus 6. And that's what I wanted. M is at most 3n minus 6 for any planar graph. Uh, so this is pretty neat. This tells me the most number of edges I can put into a planar graph. If I have, uh, right, it's nice to think about this in its contrapositive form because this can prove a graph is not planar, which again was a difficult task at the beginning. How do we show a graph is not planar? Well, this gives us a way to show it. Notice this is just a sufficient condition to show a graph is not planar. Uh, we haven't yet shown this is necessary. In fact, it's not necessary. You can be non-planar and still have less edges than this. So right, there was this 3n minus 6, this, this upper bound on the number of edges, that's a necessary condition to be planar, hence a sufficient condition to be non-planar, but it's not both necessary and sufficient for either of these. Um, so this is nice. In particular, uh, we can show K5, is not planar, right? N is equal to five, M is equal to five choose two, that's 10, so three N minus six in this case is nine, and here we have M is greater than nine, than three N minus six. And so, G, uh, so K5 is not planar, simply too many edges. Um, so one last uh, corollary here that I want to mention, and this is kind of useful and maybe somewhat surprising, is that every planar graph contains a vertex of degree 5 or less. That is, its minimum degree of G is at most 5 if G is planar. You have to have a vertex of degree 5 or less. So why is this? Well, suppose not. Then degree of V is greater than or equal to six for all vertices in the vertex set of G. The two M, right? This just goes back to the, the first theorem of graph theory, twice the number of edges. Uh, we can get that by adding up the degrees of the vertices over all vertices in the graph. Here we're saying each one is at least six. And so that's six times the order of the graph, that's six N. So this tells us that M is greater than or equal to 3N, which implies that M is greater than 3N minus six. So G is not planar. So that's kind of a, a nice surprising result. The minimum degree can't be too high uh, in a planar graph. Right. In the next video, we'll revisit the five regular polyhedra, and we're actually going to prove uh, that those are the only, um, the, the, those five platonic solids are the only regular polyhedra. I'll see you there.